baseball. America's pastime, hot dogs, freshly cut grass, and cold beer. Nothing beats a trip to the old ballpark. The Major League Baseball regular season kicks off this week, and what better way to celebrate than by taking a look back at the first baseball video game ever invented. But it turns out this story goes back further than you think. No further than that. Nope, even further. Would you believe the story of the first baseball game ever made goes all the way back to 1961 and involves an IBM 1620 mainframe data processing computer? Find out about all of this and more on this edition of Friday Night Arcade. Baseball. More than any other sport, baseball truly lends itself to deep statistical analysis. Over the course of a lengthy 162-game season, baseball players experience streaks, slumps, and everything in between. By the time the season is over, there's a large enough sample size to get a true sense of a player's average worth and what they can and can't do on the field. Now more than ever, teams are using deep statistical analysis via advanced computer algorithms as a tool in aiding roster decisions as they piece together a team. If you're a baseball fan, Google advanced sabermetrics and see how far down that rabbit hole goes. But this connection between baseball and computers is nothing new. Turns out it goes back several decades. In the late 1950s, John Bergeson served as a programmer for IBM in Akron, Ohio. John Bergeson was a lot of things. A Christian, a family man, an IBM programmer, and he also loved baseball. A lot. More so than most. John seemed fascinated with the concept of deep statistical analysis and how it factors into the probable outcome of a baseball game given the sample size of data to work with. He was an avid Cleveland Indians fan and often kept detailed statistical records of all of their games. Not just wins and losses, he charted out the pitcher, score, plate appearances, and more along with his brother Paul and they thoroughly enjoyed it. John and Paul spent much of their youth playing board games together based on the concept of baseball simulation using statistics. Think of it as D&D but with baseball. You'd roll dice or use a spinner of some kind and the on-field performances of the players were also factored in. These require a bit of imagination by today's standards, but this is pretty cool for its time. John and Paul also played a marble and nail based baseball game called Put and Take which kind of looks like a really old pinball machine. But eventually John had to move on from all that kid stuff and go off to college. He majored in physics at Carnegie Institute of Technology. After that, he went off to a naval base in Panama where he served as a civil service physicist. And while sitting in front of computing machines for two years, he fell in love with programming. In 1957, John got a call from IBM and accepted an offer to come work for them in Ohio where he got married and started a family. Toward the end of 1960, John was beginning to grow bored and a little bit restless with his life as an IBM company man. One week when he was home sick from work, he began tinkering with the idea of combining his two loves, baseball and computers. His primary work was done on this ginormous piece of technological history, the IBM 1620 mainframe computer. A little bit about the 1620, this thing is a poster child for old computers of the day. A bunch of twinkling lights on the front, noisy as heck, and the size of a refrigerator. It was used as a prop heavily in the 1970 film Colossus, the Forbin Project, depicting a supercomputer that becomes self-aware and tries to take over the world. This thing is just awesome. It was billed as the inexpensive scientific computer, although it cost anywhere from $85,000 to $125,000. IBM Archives quotes the machine as a general purpose stored program data processing system for small businesses, research and engineering departments of large companies, and schools requiring solutions to complex problems in the areas of engineering, research, and management science. Whew, that's a mouthful. The user could feed in input via punch cards, paper tape, or a keyboard interface, and it can calculate a result based on how it's programmed to read the data. The basic 1620 unit had a blazing fast 1 MHz central processing clock speed and 20,000 decimal digits of memory, although that could be expanded. I have no idea what all of that means or how it all really worked, but John Bergeson did, and he was quite good at working with one of these machines. While homesick from work, John had the idea of programming the IBM 1620 to become the world's first baseball simulation computer. He called up his brother Paul and they feverishly began to pool their statistics together for how the simulation would run. Combining their knowledge, they began to program the baseball simulation in SPS, that's Symbolic Programming System, an assembler for the IBM 1620. John started working late nights at the office, training his 1620 to incorporate boatloads of baseball statistics. The idea was pretty straightforward. The player would insert a punch card into the mainframe and load up the machine's typewriter with paper. The typewriter would then begin to auto-print, kind of like a player piano. 
and it'd prompt the player to choose the roster of nine players out of 50 possible choices. In this case, Ferguson used some of the all-time baseball greats stemming from any time period. Joe DiMaggio, Lefty Grove, Babe Ruth, Ty Cobb. Ferguson loved the idea of being able to pit any player from any era against one another. And in what may have been the first instance of someone abusing a creative player system, Ferguson also put in a couple of made-up Indians players with abnormally high batting averages just to make sure his team won. Once the choices were made, the machine would randomly choose its own lineup and run the simulation, spitting out a printout of the play-by-play -play results of the game. Beyond choosing your team, there really wasn't much input required from the player after that. There was a function where you could force a hit or something like that, but there really wasn't much to do once the team was actually picked. According to his notes from the time, John is confident he made the first full run of a simulated baseball game via an IBM 1620 on January 6, 1961. That first run had some fielding errors though. The programming still needed some work. For example, the simulation wasn't smart enough to realize if the home team was ahead after the top of the ninth, it was not necessary to play the bottom half of the inning. It took about six months of fine tuning between John and his brother to finally get it right, and they called the end result simply the baseball demonstration. It worked, and it worked rather well. Unfortunately, IBM didn't feel like this was the best use of their hardware and eventually opted to remove the baseball simulation program from their software library. They felt like having a game in there was not a serious enough use of their sophisticated computer system. And this wasn't the only underground game IBM programmers were tooling around with either. As John Bergeson recalls, you could kick up the hood on a lot of those old machines and find all sorts of gems, from simple card games to checkers. And in 1964, one guy even managed to compose an entire symphony by programming tonalities into an IBM 1401. In 1963, John wrote this letter to IBM's Department of Program Information. I'm sorry you have felt it necessary to remove novelty type programs from the library. In the economic struggle for survival our company faces, some of these programs have proven exceptionally useful in demonstration of concepts rather than a specific application in a context understandable by a layman. The baseball demonstrator program has been used often in this manner to illustrate the concept of computer simulation. As such, I consider it of high significance to the programming community. John exchanged several letters with IBM regarding their decision and ultimately they decided to keep his program in the 1620 software library after he mentioned the fact that his brother Paul helped him write the program and Paul was in fact an IBM customer. So for another couple of years after that, Ferguson's baseball demonstration program existed mostly just as a piece of novelty software, something included in as a perk for the IBM sales team to mention when they attempted to convince a corporation to shell out a hundred grand for an IBM 1620. Hey, you'll get programs for linear regressions, curve fitting, and managing your own baseball team. Cool, huh? John estimates they probably sold between 15 and 200 machines with his baseball demonstration program baked into it. Word eventually got around about this baseball simulator program, and actor-slash-radio DJ Regis Kordick was enamored by the idea. Kordick thought it would be neat to produce a fictional radio broadcast of one of these simulated baseball games featuring stars from all eras and reached out to Bergeson to see if he would mind. Bergeson was happy to help, and that's how it came to be for three days in the fall of 1961, drive-time listeners in the Pittsburgh area were treated to a War of the World-style fantasy baseball radio broadcast using simulated results from Bergeson's program. Stevie Riggs played shortstop, Willie Mays took center field, and Stan Musial was on first. This is all-time all-star baseball. All-time all-star baseball. The dream of every sports fan since the day the first statistic was entered in the book. Johnson's into the windup. Here comes the pitch, and it is swung on in a drive into left field. Babe Ruth comes over to cut it off and holds tight trainer to a single. The concept of using computers for sports simulation was expanded upon throughout the next decades and in the 70s, IBM was selling programs to scouts to aid in drafting and assembling teams. By the end of the decade, the Dallas Cowboys and Kansas City Chiefs were using IBMs to improve their draft and roster strategy. Later. More advanced computer baseball games were developed and expanded upon, and nowadays you can play through or simulate an entire season in playoffs if you like. Professional teams use computers more than ever for roster evaluation, and Hollywood recently recognized the phenomenon in the film Moneyball. So this year, as you celebrate opening day by popping in your favorite baseball game of choice from any era, take a moment and remember John Bergeson, a baseball-loving IBM programmer who, in a dimly lit cubicle back in 1961, developed the first ever computer baseball simulation game. Without his idea, none of this may have been possible. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Friday Night Arcade.